Hello, hello everybody, bonjour. Nous sommes aujourd'hui avec Sigrun. J'ai le grand honneur de lui souhaiter la bienvenue. Et maintenant, on switch en anglais, évidemment. Hello, Sigrun. Thank you very, very much for being with us here. I'm very happy that you accepted this invitation. And I'm very much looking forward to what you have to tell us. Thank you for having me. And it's wonderful to be here on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, yes. <laughs> really late afternoon. <laughs> late afternoon, almost dinner time. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I thought you brought some very interesting uh, content for us. So, yes, yes. I, I um, suggest you start and tell us what you brought. Maybe I'll introduce myself first before we dive into the content. So uh, I'm from Iceland uh, and I moved to Germany 20 years old to study. And I was one of those that I thought I knew my path since I was 11. I was like very determined to study architecture. 11 years old, I decided that. And so 20 years old, I moved to Germany to study architecture, obviously. I was still on my path, only to realize at the end of my studies that I didn't really want to work as an architect. Mm. And I fell in love with the internet uh, and started to... Uh, Uh, study computer science. After I finished architecture, I like to finish what I start, even if it's hard. Mm. It's not so nice when you've decided you don't want to do it. You still finish it. Uh, I wanted my degree. And then, then I moved over to computer science and I started to work full time in a, in a software company. And I realized there that I had these leadership skills. Like I was, uh, you know, immediately within three months promoted to uh, a director uh, oh. within the software company. And there was something that I realized about myself. I had been so stuck in my architecture studies that, you know, I didn't even see it myself. I was never in a position to see my own skills. And uh, so suddenly I'm like studying computer science in a software company and I discover my own leadership skills, which were known to my parents since I was born. They say, yeah, you were always a leader since you were six year old. <laughs> But, you know, we don't see ourselves, our own son of genius. Ooh. And uh, then I lost my job. This was, uh, uh, you know, the software company was growing very fast. And then they had to let a lot of people go because they were basically burning money and not making money. So this was, I asked them, how are you making money? And they said, none of your business because I was not, in the management team. So mm -hmm. they were like, don't you worry about that? And I was like, very suspicious. And then I lost my job. What uh. a surprise. Uh, so that's where I did first time ever a three month course on how to start a company. Wow. But I didn't dare to do it. I was scared, you know, I had this fear. Uh, I wish I would have done it back then and not waited another 10, 12 years. Oh, incredible. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah. Wow. No, but it was a three month course and uh, especially for women. Mm. That's also where I got inspired to do something specially for women. Um, and then I basically uh, started to work in another software company. And then one day that company was sold. And then I got this crazy idea to ask to be the CEO. Wow. And I did not have the education. I had been studying architecture and computer science. Um, and I did not like know anything about accounting or, you know, mm -hmm. couldn't talk about that. But what I had to my favor is that I had been the project manager and I had talked to all the clients. I knew all the clients. I knew what they wanted. I knew what they needed. I had sold them things. And this is the thing about business. You need to be able to know what your ideal client wants and sell to them what they want from you and then you can build a business around it so i got the job <laughs> and the company had been losing money for seven years i didn't know that and i turned it around within 11 months and made it very profitable doubled the value of the business and the owners of the company got twice the money back that they had put in within three years Yeah, well, so, I remember you said you motivated the, the personnel. Huh? I remember. Yeah, that. no, I, I yeah, I was, uh, we became one of the 50 best small businesses to work for in Iceland. Yeah. So that was my, uh, you know, you don't get like a, a trophy or a, a, let's say a degree when you are uh, working somewhere. 
but so when your employees or your clients tell you that you are amazing, like that's the like, oh yeah. Yeah. So after this, I started business. Oh. <laughs> Only after this experience. So I already was a successful CEO. And then I started business because I wanted the foundation. Um, but then I also saw the problems with the business education. It's all about working in big, big companies. It MBAs, MBA programs are not for small business owners. They're not for entrepreneurs. They're not for online business owners. Now, I hope the education has changed a bit since 10 years ago when I did it. But I still think it's very much geared towards you going and working in a company with 500,000 employees and you are just a manager. The MBA, is, it's, it's a box. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, you get ideas and then you carry them with you. Mm -hmm. And then I implemented this idea two years ago, Sigrun's Online MBA, specifically for women. We do have a few good men. Uh, they gotta be on with me. They they gotta be on with me on the mission of uh, accelerating gender equality, and they gotta be okay with me talking about women all the time. And if they're okay with that, they can be with us. Mm. And, and there are many who do. Uh, you know, we have like I don't ten, fifteen men, but mostly it's for women because what I realized, you know, I was always in male environments. Uh, the companies I run were always software, IT, medical devices, always mostly men. I tried to hire women, but it was, was, was very hard because women lack self-confidence. They don't even apply for the job. If they apply for the job, they represent them not so well in the interviews. Then they're not so very good at negotiating a salary. So I had constantly to kind of like, okay, I want to hire you even if you think you're not good enough, or I'm going to pay you the same salary as the guy next to you, even if you didn't ask for it. And, you know, I was doing these things 2004, five. Uh, mm -hmm. Now it's mandatory, illegal in Iceland to pay mm -hmm. women less than men. Ah, wow. Yes, it's illegal. And so the companies of a certain size, now this will not apply for solopreneurs, but companies of a certain size will uh, aim to get certified that they're doing equal pay, which is similar. Somebody says, oh, that's such a burden. This is a horrible thing. I was arguing with someone in my Facebook group and I said, no, this is a good thing. Um, you know, there are environmental things that we want to force onto companies as well. And they have to get certified that they're environmental. So why not equality? Yeah. yeah. To me, that's, that's as important or even more important because that's my mission. Mm. Um, so when I was creating Samba, I was thinking about how can I help women the most? And I would create the same business education for men but there are still uh, certain ways that I had to include. For instance, a community. Women need much more community than men. Men could mm -hmm. work in silos and just, I tell them what to do and they go and do it. Uh, women need much more kind of like, we often need to be in a Facebook group for a few weeks and see someone do something. I'm like, ah, I can do that too. So we need to, yeah. see, we need more of those role models. Well. The men don't need it because they have it already. The role models are everywhere and we don't have so many for the women. And another thing that I saw, and this is not specifically women or men, well, I just don't know enough men online entrepreneurs, but well, I think actually, as I'm saying it, I think this is more of a female problem mm. that women create things like they, they, they think they're not ready. They're never ready. A man yeah. will always think they're ready. So why are men generally more successful in life? It's not because they're better. It's because they just do it. Yeah. 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 You are the one to know it because you worked so much with them. Yeah, I worked so much with men. And I would say I was, I was brought up in the belief I could do every, anything I wanted. Um, during my architecture studies, I don't think I, I had the, the confidence I have today, but I think... I did jump when I saw an opportunity. Mm. I did make that phone call and become a CEO. Uh, when I was asked, do you want to be a TEDx speaker? And I had never spoken on a stage. I said, yes. Like every time there's been opportunity, even if I'm scared, even if I think I don't know how to do it, I've said yes. Mm. Now, if it's something that I don't want to do, I say no. 
But if, if, if I feel in my heart, like, oh, I really want to do it. I'll just say yes. And I'll figure it out. And I don't know where this comes from, but I've developed this skill more and more. So now when I see someone say, I'm not ready. And I'm like, you will never be ready. Yeah. And it, they sound like it sounds like it's rude, but I'm like, we can go on and say, we're not ready for this. Like, I'm not ready for the next job. I'm not ready to start my business. I'm not ready to do this and that. Well, you will be ready once you decide to do it. So one of the things that I've done now to be ready is to book a concert hall in Iceland in 2020 yes, <laughs> with 1,600 seats. Now, the biggest event I've done so far is 200 women. And I have no idea how to sell 1,600 seats. Did this, yeah, stop, wow. did this stop me from booking the concert hall? No, it didn't. Hmm. Because... You know, it's like you jump and the net will appear. Yeah, this is how it works. I know when I had, uh, I organized um, shows with the Oriental Dance, it was also like this. You fix a date and then yeah. you go there. And if you have to perform and you think, oh, I don't know. The yeah. day, when the day is there, you just perform and you are ready. Is this how it's Yeah, it's you? like you, you book that course or you sign up with that coach or you book that concert hall or you design a date for your public talk you are going to make it happen once that is set in stone. So if that, that thinking of like, I'm not ready, it really ruins a lot of opportunity for women. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is really holding us back. And I say us, like, I do believe that I also have lost opportunities because I was scared, not so much today, but I think back maybe 10 years ago uh, where I don't, didn't have the same confidence I have today. And now I think I'm ready for anything like uh, <laughs> You know, it's just, I think it's up to our imagination. And what helps, of course, is being a community mm -hmm. where there are women that have a little bit more confidence because they've been doing it longer or have practiced or have been inspired, maybe by me. And then somebody else who still thinks they're not ready suddenly gets this idea like, hey, I might just try it out. And we've seen this again and again and again. Yeah, I have a lot of women who uh, tell me that I have uh, to learn a lot of things before, before I can join Somba and I feel too small. And so, and it's very good what you are saying, because uh, when, when are we ready? Yeah? It's also, and in Somba, it's not only about technique. You are really coaching everyone. I know it from myself. It's just so incredible how one has an inner development um, with the group and what you are teaching. Yeah, it's yeah, because it's interesting because I have always uh, looked at myself as a business coach or actually I call myself a business mentor because a coach is more someone who constantly asks you how you feel about things. Um, and I tell you what to do and how to do it and when to do it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the general term is business coach. And I never kind of like wanted to call myself a life coach. But when my husband talks about what I do, he says my, my wife is a business and life coach. And I'm like, I'm not a life coach. I said, well, <laughs> you're changing lives. And I'm like, I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> because yeah. if you don't have confidence, that's going to be obvious to anyone who's thinking of working with you. Mm -hmm. So first, this inner work needs to happen. Now, it's a chicken and egg problem. Uh, I'm actually mm -hmm. writing an email right now. Chicken and egg. Uh, <laughs> it's a chicken and egg problem because if you don't feel confident... You know, people will feel it, but there is someone that's going to start and then your confidence grows. So it's like chicken and egg. Like you cannot wait until you're ready, until you, you know, ask for the sale or, or put out an offer or go live on your Facebook page or join a program. You just have to do it. And then once you've done it, it's like, that wasn't so hard. I yeah. actually can do it. So then, you know, your confidence grows and the more you go out of your comfort zone, the bigger it gets. Yeah, this so, is what I also love because you allow people to start small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then go. Everyone and starts. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone starts at zero. And uh, I luckily still remember exactly how I felt when I had that first sale. So when somebody comes along and says, I have no clients or I only have a few and I need to have more. I said, I know how that feels. And now here's what you do next. But you need to take action. And what. What is the problem with many online business programs or 
so-called business programs out there is that they're teaching too much about list building, mm. how to create courses and launches. Well, we have all of that in Samba. What is much more important that you learn how to sell. Mm. And yeah, but selling this, you, you make is, it so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you make it so easy. Yeah. Selling is not a bad word or bad thing. It's not about mm. doing something bad to another person. You are serving. Selling mm. is serving. So if you have a skill, if you're good at something and you're not selling it, means you're not serving other people, yeah. you are holding back and you are doing a disservice, disservice to your ideal client. So your ideal client is there somewhere mm. and they're often closer than you think. And if you are not putting out your offer to them, if you're not building up a relationship that leads ultimately to a sale, you're doing the world a disservice. Mm. When you start to think about it like that, then it changes your mind. And there's another thing that needs to happen. People need to invest in themselves. And that's where also women, we are a little bit more scared to do that than men. Uh, we are worried about not being able to do what we're supposed to do or things like that. Um, and this is a chicken and egg problem. Um, I've had several, I've been chatting with several people on many chats and all over the place. And it's like, oh, I'm not ready. And I need to earn a little bit more money until I join a program like this. I'm like, could it be, could it be that it's a chicken and egg problem? Hmm. Because why should someone invest into you if you are not willing to invest in yourself, it's an energy. Yeah. And uh, I was not, I didn't take off in my business. I was making some money, uh, two or three thousand dollars a month. Finally, when I invested, boom, rocket. Mm -hmm. There was, and I didn't even have the first, like, I didn't even. <laughs> It was just paying the fee of the coaching was not even doing the coaching. Uh, are you? No, no. Immediately after I, um, you know, signed up for this program that I signed up for five years ago, uh, four and a half years ago, I um, received an email whether I did one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and it paid 30% of what, I had already kind of invested before I had a single session or call or got any resources from the program. So there's something magical about it. I believe it. And I do this all the time. I forward invest mm -hmm. and it always comes back. Now I have to do work, of course, myself. And this is not like just sitting back and watching videos, but you have to do the work. Yeah, uh, but there is a certain magic to this, what you are telling. Uh, it's, it's energy. Working, it's energy. I'm yeah. understanding this more and more and more. Yeah. It's energy and thing. I don't, want, I don't want it to sound woo-woo, and I don't think it's woo-woo. It's, it's really, it's just energy. Like, uh, I, have, I have signed up for free trainings, and many of them I've not attended or used or showed up for the webinar. And then I pay, and I show up. Yeah. And also when I started to charge more, I got better clients. Hmm. Yeah, it's really about energy. And there's yeah. something more about energy in Zomba, which I personally love is this community. Sometimes you have like an idea and say, let's all do this. And yeah. then everybody is going and then you, yeah. can, you can like now everybody's coming into Zomba and they are welcome and they, I can feel such an energy. It's really it's like energy again. Up. Yeah, yeah, and and I love it because there are new members joining, and the uh, old members, those who've been around for yeah. a year or longer, they're saying, "Welcome, welcome, welcome!" Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's like a big sister. It's, it's, it's like New Year, fresh beginnings, yeah. and uh, there's something magical about that. Using January to kick off things, and not letting January just pass along. And yeah, <laughs> who knows where you will be in spring if you don't do anything in January? So. January is for me uh, a time to take decisions and take action and take the first step, uh, whatever that first step is. So without further ado, I wanted to show the seven stages because yes, please. Mm -hmm. this is uh, what I think uh, happens a lot that on one hand, we women say we're not ready, but on the other hand, we create this massive 
things and, and go a little bit too far before we learn to sell. So how to avoid that? Uh, so I came up with this framework two years ago. And I remember when I showed this to my clients, they said, where was this? Where did you hide this? Why didn't you show this to me before? <laughs> and I said, uh, it just took me several years to come up with the idea and how to explain it. Um, so it's very common in, in, in business teachings that companies go through stages. But what you learn in a traditional MBA is very different stages. So here mm -hmm. are the stages that I saw myself go through and my clients. So the first stage is testing. You have a business idea or you don't have a business idea, but you are searching for it. And this is the stage where you should find your true passion and the right business idea, a business idea that can make you money, not a business idea that can't make you money mm -hmm. and find your first test clients. And I emphasize this a lot inside Somba and have uh, done extra master classes and things like that, extra trainings to really make sure that people do this step properly. We have a whole course, Passionathon. Yeah, I confirm. <laughs> yeah, and the right business idea. And even people who have a business do it because they want to know that they're on the right track. So it's not just for beginners. It's, it's for anyone who just wants to clarify the next step on their business direction. Mm -hmm. Then stage two is when you're starting to charge for your services. Uh, and I suggest that most people, I would say 80, 90% need to go just into one-on-one -on -one coaching in the beginning, one-on-one -on -one services. Uh, don't jump into group programs and online courses from the get-go because unless, uh, you know, I know that you are a dance teacher, for instance, uh, if you have a studio and they have an audience, that's different, but then you're kind of working for them. If you are building up your own business, it is very hard to jump from no clients to many clients. Mm. It's very obvious when you say it like here, but believe me, I've had dozens, if not hundreds of women, not my clients necessarily because my clients learn this framework, but I've offered free coaching sessions and I've talked to women who have created huge online courses before they had a single client. And I ask them this simple question. So you are trying to sell something to many people in one go, and you couldn't even sell this to one person, the same idea. Yeah, sounds and lovely. It's like an epiphany. So before you waste time and money into creating something, sell it to one person first and then sell it to another and another. So I suggest if you are a typical coach, uh, you would probably spend uh, quite some time in one-on-one. -on -one. I spent a whole year there. Uh, it can be a lot shorter. Uh, and then you go into groups. If you're not so into one-on-one -on -one coaching, this, this step can be really short. It could be just two, three months. But mm -hmm really just getting through that to understand your ideal client. Then you start to offer group programs uh, because meanwhile, you've been building up your list. And typically the first clients in a group program, they are actually your old one-on-one -on -one clients, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know this until I did it myself. And then my clients have told me the same thing. And I'm like, yes, because they're your super fans. <laughs> they are your super fans mm -hmm. and they're going to buy anything from you. And once you had enough super fans, you have a very, very good business. Hmm. So group programs, you start with four or six people in a group. And what can happen, you don't have to stay in the stage also long if you don't want to. Once you've created a group program and you can see the steps people need to go through to achieve success, whatever that success looks like, you can take that group program and turn it into an online course. Or like in my case, I loved the group program so much that I turned them into a mastermind and didn't actually take the route of creating an online course right away. I had my Passionathon course already. I've had it since five years now. And then I suggest people start with smaller online courses, something like four weeks. And that's what we do in Sampa Summer School. And that's what you said was so inspiring and motivating and yeah, energy-wise, it, it changed the whole community, I would say. And people are already getting excited. It's January now. Yes. People are getting excited for July. 
uh, where we do this challenge again because it was a huge, huge success. And I just enjoyed it so much. I enjoy seeing people take action. Yeah, for me, it was life changing. Really, it was incredible. First time I had to people with so much gratitude for me and what I did, and I could not believe it. <laughs> yeah. So the first online course should be short. You learn how to create an online course. You learn how to sell it. You learn how to execute it. And uh, we have all the training inside Zomba for this. But as I said, on top of that, we do a specific challenge now once a year. We did the first time 2018. Yeah. We're not going to do seven because people you know, the modules are there, but it's kind of hard to get started. And then you get this extra push because everyone is working on it together. So that's beautiful. And I help people advertise the courses, which is, of course, a great bonus. Yeah, it's fantastic. Then, uh, yeah. Your support. Yeah. <laughs> then it's uh, ready for a signature program. Now, some people who created their first four week online course realized that that is their signature program. Uh, others said, no, this is more like a starter course. So if you want to compare it to someone, my passion-a-thon, where you find your true passion and the right business idea, that's more like a starter course, you know, because mm -hmm. it doesn't really help you make money. It helps you find the right business idea. And that's why I don't sell it separately. It is inside Zomba as a bonus. A signature program is the one thing you want to be known for. That's something like Zomba. In my case, it's 12 months. Typically, it's not so long. It could be eight or 12 weeks, but it has the potential uh, to replace your income completely hmm. that's what a signature program is yeah. signature you know like you're signing a letter it's yeah, it's yeah. really it has your name on it so it has many meanings signature for me it is all roads all your list building all your communication uh, your description on social media if you have a podcast it would be in your intro all roads lead to the program you might have all the programs, but it should be your goal that everyone goes through it. It's interesting, like in my case, I offer a retreat once a year and everyone has gone to Somba first. Yeah. And that's so good because then we have a common understanding. Yeah. We have the same language. Uh, people have gone through similar experiences. And now I don't want, want even people who have not been in Somba. I've had uh, someone was emailing me yesterday and said, can I sign up for your retreat? I said, join Somba first. <laughs> yeah. Because it's kind of hard if you spend time with a group of people and then two or three or one person mm -hmm. hasn't been a part of your community. There's just not this common thread and understanding. So signature program is where you would really be so passionate. You say to everyone, I'm only going to work with you if you do this first. <laughs> a lot of people cannot even imagine having a signature program one day. I couldn't either. Yeah. Now, five years ago, I saw other people create theirs and I thought to myself, I have no idea what my signature program is. I don't know if I will ever have one. I created my small Passionathon course and I was very happy with it. And, but I saw that that course did not have the potential. So I actually did not sell it as much as I maybe could have. I put it more to the side. I focused on my one-on-one -on -one clients. Then I focused on my group programs. And then one day... After three years in business, it was there. It just came to me. Hmm. I've seen it happen a much. Uh, yeah, I didn't have the same support that I offer now through Samba. I'm seeing it happen a lot faster. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing people go typically through three to four stages in one year. So if somebody starts at one, I wouldn't want to promise you that you create a signature program in 12 months, but mm -hmm. you are going to get to stage four in 12 months. Then you go from four to six or seven in the second year. Yeah. You know, yeah. somebody that that tells you that you can build a business, like a fully fledged business that I'm showing here in, in, in eight weeks or half a year or 12 months, they're lying. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And then six is expanding portfolio where uh, you can add something else because just having a signal program mm, might not be so fulfilling for you. You know, maybe you want something extra with your clients and it's a win-win situation where your super fans will probably tell you what they want. So yeah. my, my super fans told me that, Sigur, why don't you do a retreat in Iceland? And I'm like, <laughs> Ooh. so I had been thinking about it, but I didn't dare to, you know, make it real. But your super fans, they'll help you. They come up with offers and they suggest it to you. 
And yeah, I, I had with my uh, fans, they organized to meet each other. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. I just said, well, I will invite you. It was so funny. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's what's happened. And then seven, if you really want to go to an expert status, like you want to be recognized as the go-to person in your niche, mm. uh, you know, who is invited to a podcast, uh, you know, interview or invited to in a virtual summit or invited to speak at a big conference, it's the people who are in stage seven where people have started to recognize them as experts. Now, this requires uh, PR, media, uh, writing a book, uh, practicing speaking, obviously. So not everyone wants to go to stage seven, but I think many, many can and will do if they want to. And I think I created this uh, framework because I saw people create online courses or do something like writing a book. I've had people uh, talk to me that wrote a book already and then say, Sigrun, can you help me sell it? And I said, do you have a community? Do you have a list? And I'm like, sorry, that's not how it works. Of course, if you write a book and you just put it as a list building tool on your website, that might work. Um, but starting building a community and working one-on-one, -on -one, that's really the method. If you already have a community, now I've been talking to several people in the last few days, and I have people where well, they have big email lists already, but they're selling two low-priced programs. So they have the traffic, and I say, that's good. Now we just need to fix the monetization. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have the traffic, let's start sell to one person at a time until you have the traffic to sell to many. Yeah, what I like, because you show this um, here, the plan, what I like in Zomba is that we get a checklist where we see where we are and what we have to do in this stage. Yes. I think this is so fantastic because I did other courses before Zomba and I got so much lost. I wanted to learn everything at the same time. And uh, it was Zomba. It does not happen because we even have this checklist. Huh? Yeah. So for every stage, there's a checklist. What you should not do. Yes. <laughs> and what you should do. Because the not doing... That was where I got most frustrated that people were wasting their time and money on the wrong things. And uh, so inside some point, we ensure you don't do that. Mm. So uh, this was the six, uh, seven stages. And I also had here somewhere. Um, because we talk about a lot about making six figures and it's kind of like, okay, do you really have to make six figures? But in the profit workshop, do you see the yeah. right thing here? Yeah, very good. How to uh, go from zero to 100K. Yeah. I have so many things open on my computer. <laughs> I lost myself. Okay. So let's look back here. Um, it actually does cost money to run online business. It's not for free. And you know that already. Good run. Oh, Zoom yes. costs <laughs> money. Uh, you know, and it adds up. In the beginning, you can do it really cheap, but at some point you realize you want better tools mm -hmm. uh, and you want to automate more. So the costs go up. That's why I do th think everyone should aim for six figures. It doesn't mean that you have to kind of hurry up and make that right away, but you should at least have the idea of how you could do it. And it's better to start at the top with higher prices. So if you start with low prices, if you sell something for 47, you have to sell it over 2,000 times. And if you don't have traffic to your website, don't have a big email list, don't have many likes on your fan, fan page, hmm. it's not possible. And already this is one of the biggest problems I see. Hmm. Then if you have a higher price, now I'm not suggesting you started right away with something for 20,000, but let's say if you were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and you charge 1,000 or 2,000, well, the numbers are starting to look a lot more realistic, a hmm. lot more realistic. So what would this be? Uh, here are many ideas. This is like international prices. Now, if you're in a different country, it uh, might be different. But these are online prices. Yeah. Uh, doesn't matter if it's business coaching or life coaching or whatever. These are actually quite uh, normal prices online. Mm. Uh, uh, one of my friends or my new friends in my new mastermind, she's selling a weight loss course for $1.99. You know, mm -hmm. So you earn some million a month. Mm -hmm. It's scale. So yeah. uh, 
So these prices are something you, you kind of like, okay, it gives you some idea what you could sell at, but you need the numbers going back to this number. Like you need a certain number. It's math. It's basically math at the end of the day. And yeah. here's what I teach inside Samba. You don't start with a website and a freebie and all those small courses and small prices. You start on the top working one-on-one -on -one with clients and then you build it out and you create those smaller courses. I also have uh, workshops or something I sell for 47. Currently, I'm not selling anything. I, I often have this like time limited, maybe for a certain time, and then I take it away. Because now, this is fantastic you... because then people think they have to work on it because otherwise, like I buy things and then I never do them. But mm -hmm. when time limit, then people do I have it. time limit of, of all my things because also... Um, I focus now my full energy into marketing Samba. Uh, I want to help as many people as possible, accelerate gender equality and help women build real profitable businesses. Mm -hmm. And then I need to focus 100% on the people who join Samba. So you can't be making your offers all the time. You have to compartmentalize uh, your efforts, your energy. It comes mm -hmm. back to energy. Yeah. So if you would be doing one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, Let's say 3,000, if you maybe have a six-month program, 33 clients. And think about that. That's a whole year. That's 12 months. That's 52 weeks. Yeah. That doesn't sound so crazy, but too many people start low and can never get to the top. So it's rethinking the business model and making sure you have the scale. Hmm. So here are all the different ideas to go to 100,000, but... I think uh, anyone watching or listening uh, gets the idea that you have to look at, and we did cover this, of course, in the Profit Workshop, yes, uh, which is available for three more hours. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, inside Samba, we take you through this path of, uh, maybe there's one more slide I want to share. That's the path, right? I think people were uh, very inspired by that one. So I'm trying to do too many things at the same time. Okay. This is the last slide I'm going to share, but this is here. Um, how Samba helps you move this through the seven stages, which we shared just before. So mm -hmm. if you're in stage one, I've actually started to write A and B. <laughs> if you're in stage A, then you don't have a business idea. So we have Passionathon, a four-week program. So by end of February, you would have the right business idea. Only four weeks. Yeah, then I think this is very important to say because a lot of people think I cannot join if I don't know exactly what I want to do. But this is not true. No, this is not true. We have, I don't know, I don't know the percentages, but I could imagine 20, 30% of new Sambas don't have a business idea yeah. or they have a little idea, they're not sure about it. So they are perfect. We go right into the Passionathon uh, first week of February. Mm. Uh, we run it live in a separate Facebook group, uh, not to disturb the main Sampa group. And then once you're finished with the Passionathon, you will have the business idea that works online. And then you go into learning how to find test clients and how to ask for testimonials. And then you have completed stage one. Because the next stage, stage two, is how to find paying clients. And the interesting thing, it's a very similar methodology to find paying clients and you found the free clients. So they just repeat the process, but they're repeating it with more self-confidence mm -hmm. and they learn from the community what to charge. And we have a lot of discussion about pricing and things like that. And then whether you want to go fully booked or you want to jump into groups, that depends on how much traffic, how fast you can build your list and things like that. So we do have all these things like list building and launching and online marketing and Facebook ads and who knows what. But the key is here is to move to the stages. And each stage, two, three, four, each stage can be a six-figure stage. It depends how long you want to stay in the stage or how fully booked you want to want be from each uh, method. But we move you through and we kind of force everyone to create an online course in July anyway, no <laughs> matter your stage. So we put you very quickly into stage three. So by end of July, everyone is in stage three. 
And mm -hmm. then the question is, some people will be ready for a signature program. Some people offered a group program right after July. So in August or September, they were offered a group program. And then it's about repeating what works. Rinse and repeat. Problem with many entrepreneurs, myself included, we like to start new things and not to repeat what we did already. Mm -hmm. But the successful entrepreneurs, they repeat what worked, they look at what they can improve, and it's rinse and repeat. So, and that's why also some by 12 months, because launching or selling or creating programs is not something you learn just in a week and then you know it. You have to do it and then you do it again and you have to do it again. Practice makes perfect. So that's how we help you go from stage one to seven. And uh, as I said, typically people go through three, four stages in a year uh, and build a six, can truly build a six-figure business in 12 months uh, by using all the strategies in Samba. Yeah, and of course, I can uh, really attest that it works because in March, I was, I was rewriting yesterday the review of Zomba and thinking of my year. And uh, I see in March, I had my first paying client and it was so incredible. You even wrote an email to, uh, to everybody that I did. So it's, uh, it was such an incredible feeling. And the funny thing was, the more I did it, of course, the better it worked. And uh, one time there was a person, she, I just was doing um, a speech coaching for free and after that she said so now how much do I have to pay uh, you because uh, the, even just for the questions she thought that I helped her yeah. so the method you are teaching is easy and and really much uh, it's not even fun it's so enjoyable to talk to the people and then they get to be your clients it's yeah, yeah it's perfect I think I could not imagine of a easier or a better way and it's fulfilling. This is also what it is. It's fulfilling for everybody. You know, I'm on a mission to help women make their dreams come true. I think we can change the world by starting mm. building and scaling our businesses. Uh, my hope is that uh, uh, as many women as possible start their own business mm -hmm. because we're not going to change the system out there. I think the corporate world is very male dominated. And I honestly don't want to compete in that world. I think we can create a new system. And uh, we need more women to build businesses. Some of these businesses will be small, and that's fine. I think that's the backbone of society, of the economy, are small businesses. And some of these businesses will be large. And uh, that, that's my hope that we basically just change the world together. Yeah, very good, very good uh, mission. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think our time... Uh is unfortunately up. I thank you very, very much. I don't know if you have time that I can ask you uh, two, three questions or um, not. Sure, ask me two, three questions. Yeah, sure. Yes. Um, I, uh, some people ask me, they are into selling products and they uh, wonder if uh, Samba can help them. So in Samba, we do have products-based businesses, uh, but I, I would say you need to be open-minded because we talk and it's, it's a little bit like for the men joining Samba. I talk all the time about accelerating gender equality and women and we need to stick together and build up our self-confidence and the same with product-based businesses. I talk a lot about working one-on-one -on -one with clients, creating an online course, creating an online program. And those who are product-based business and join Samba, they need to be okay with that because I'm not going to change my language. Mm -hmm. But you will learn a lot about online marketing, how to, uh, you know, basically be visible, uh, put your things out there, create a freebie. And yes, product-based businesses can have a freebie. Mm -hmm. uh, content marketing. Um, it is uh, in some ways, let's say, a little bit different approach uh, for products, but still the basic foundation of building a profitable business is the same. Uh, the same for B2B. We have also several B2B businesses in uh, Samba, which means uh, these are people who will find their clients of, often offline through networking events or through LinkedIn. And yes, they are very happy in Samba because they learn a lot and they, they see something. I'm like, does this work for me? And, and, and they try it out. And just recently, um, one person that's kind of always been inspired by what I do and She's been a part of Samba and she did not believe because it's in B2B and selling like big consulting projects to companies. She said, I did not believe that I could 
have an online business? And I always told her, yes, you can. And I gave her several tools and I did a B2B masterclass specifically for her and some other people, not just for her alone. Uh, <laughs> and now she has an online course on her website and people go and buy it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So yeah, somebody is designed to build a profitable online business. I talk a lot about coaching, consulting, training, service-based businesses, but we do have, we have a golf course owner. We have insurance mm. broker. Uh, you know, we, we have many types of businesses that are not traditional where they don't fit into that online business service-based module model and they still get a lot of benefit out of somebody. So I think it's more for the question to ask yourself, like, I, am I looking for this and does it have to be in this language? Then somebody's not for you. Are you open-minded and thinking like, I want to be in a positive uh, community with female role models uh, and I am totally have an open mind and I'm willing to try out things? Yeah, then somebody's for you. Yeah, very good that you say, because I was saying something like that, that you can say just perfectly. <laughs> so I, I think I'd rather ask you to. Okay, very good. That's the, I, and for the rest, you already answered all the other questions I had. Okay. People being perhaps afraid or not knowing what their business idea is. And so, yeah, yeah so wonderful. You're never and ready until you just jump and the net will appear. Yeah. This is right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Gudrun. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Bye. -bye.